Welcome to Live Music Showcase here on 88.5 WMNF Tampa. I'm your host, Ken Apperson. We are live in studio with the local legend, Mr. Damon Fowler. How y'all doing? Doing great, Ken. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, man. They got a big show tonight at the Palladium. Big show. We're excited. There's already a whole bunch of tickets sold for it, but there's still tickets available that you can still get right now. Uh, you're going to hear exactly what you're going to hear tonight and probably maybe just a taste of it. I would imagine the live on stage performance is even more kind of epic. Well, uh, and it's a little early today, so this is the <laughs> early version of our tunes. We just had the first cup of coffee so far That's today. Right. That's right. All right. Well, what's your first song? JP's going to sing a song. All right. Howling at, howling at Midnight. All right. Take it away. All right. to my soul right now i love it damon fowler here on live music showcase uh jp uh that was awesome jp right yeah okay uh yeah dulcimer yeah thank you just to let everyone know that was a dulcimer if you're wondering why you're, you're experiencing a sudden urge to like sit on your front porch and, and start whittling uh you know some kind of fine woodworking project that's why it's, it's excellent i love it thank you. it's where my brain has been for the past six months it's great uh what's the next song 
Uh, the next song is a, a song I'm going to sing, and I want to say that uh, you know I'm I'm a third uh, member of in this band contributor, but uh, we're called Southern Hospitality, and and uh, I'm really happy to be here with my friend JP and Vic, and Terrence and Chris. You got it, man. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, you've got you've got a band full of like all stars here. I mean, Victor Wainwright over there on the keys, everybody, just to just to make everything abundantly clear. Uh, this is a very important show for Debbie and F for Live Music Showcase. So thank you guys so much for being here. Dude, today. thank we you really so much for having us, man. Yeah, we love it. Absolutely. So uh, this song is called Hard Times Fade Away, and uh, it's a rumba. Ooh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Take it away. Uh oh. Take your All time, right. JP. Well, in the meantime, just so you know, if you're listening right now, you can also watch this show happening live on our Facebook page and on YouTube. Just go to Facebook and search WMNF's Live Music Showcase, or on YouTube, just search WMNF Community Radio, and you'll find the live stream. We've already got people hanging out right now. We've got uh, people in the comments. Uh, sounds great, groovy. Hey, everyone. So good to see you on the big screen. That's Shelly. That's Rosie. That's Dan. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, take it away. All right, sure. Let it go 
So in the morning I'm gonna work In the evening I'm gonna pray That the good times Oh, they go on forever In the hard times Fade away to me Baby, I need you That is all So in the morning I'm gonna work In the evening I'm gonna pray That the good times They get better And the hard times Fade away That the good times Oh, they get better And the hard times Fade away And the hard times Fade away And the hard times Fade away Killer, killer, killer. Southern Hospitality here on Live Music Showcase. 
We've got Damon Fowler. We've got Victor Wainwright in here. We've got J.P. Sears in here. I mean, it's a heavy-hitting episode, you guys. I'm not going to downplay it uh, at all, frankly. Uh, I, I, and, I mean, there's so much I could sit here. I, I mean, we could sit here and just talk the entire episode, but I wouldn't do that to the audience because that would be a travesty, I think. Uh, but they have, a, they have a huge show going on tonight at the Palladium uh, over there in St. Pete. Uh, you can go to My Palladium. I believe it's MyPalladium.com. Just to double check here. It, oh, sorry. MyPalladium.org uh, to get tickets uh, for the show tonight, which does still have a few tickets available, as I understand, but not very many. It's not a huge room. Uh, but, uh, man, I don't know if you've ever been to a Damon Fowler show or a Victor Wainwright show. Uh, and I love that you guys have put together this, like, kind of like a super group a little bit. Have you called it that yet? Well, we've been called many things. <laughs> 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 and, and truthfully, this has been a band. We've been friends forever. And we put a record out at least 10 years ago. We've yeah. been a band for about at least 12 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's a, a project that we started kind of by accident. We were just jamming and somebody wanted us to do a gig and we put a little tour together and by the end of the gig they were calling us southern hospitality but ah. originally we called it the southern hospitality tour and uh, we didn't have a website or a booking agent or anything like that and we just started doing gigs and picking things up and it, it's really turned out great it's been a really awesome fun project for all of us for 10 years isn't that just the best sign that the universe is like in your corner when it just kind of falls together like that that's the best yeah yeah and you're like you're like we must be doing something right if we're just kind of like landing in this position it inspires me not to try <laughs> <laughs> just like Bukowski's headstone yeah, yeah. Don't, try. don't try I love it I love it and uh, I mean you know I'll, I'll bring this up just because I've, I've worked with you in the past and, and got to know you a little bit you were on the show my first I think you were I think you might have been my third episode ever Wow. Of hosting this show when we did that episode at the Palladium yeah. on location. Yeah, about 2020 or something. 2021. Yeah, 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I was terrified between <laughs> you and me because, you know, there's a lot riding on it. Um, and, you know, you were just such a, a an easy person to work with. And, and you were just like, yeah, I'll be there. No problem. And we did we did a little pre-interview yeah, on the yeah. phone. Was, I, I remember it was really fun. Yeah. I mean, y you made me as a as a fledgling radio host feel welcome in, in an in an environment that otherwise doesn't always feel the most welcome in an industry that's not always so welcome. So thank you for that. Hey, really. dude, thank you. I mean, you know, in the in the under the umbrella that we're in, like the blues world mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, there's not really a lot of mean people. Like, everybody's pretty friendly, and, and our goal is to show up and have fun and be friendly, you know. Yeah. And it's it makes life better. Yeah, you know? I couldn't agree more. And, and you know, Victor, too, you were on the show my first year, but I wasn't the one hosting. I, I had to have a fill-in that day. Oh, right. And okay. so I was like, I was like, man, I missed out on, on Victor. What was I? What was I thinking? <laughs> I believe I was here with the Reverend Billy C. Wirtz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wirtz. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. And uh, I'd love to have you back, uh, you know, on your own as well when you get into that mode again. Assuming you know Southern hospitality. Uh, oh yeah. You know, but uh, but back to Southern hospitality. I mean, you know, you guys put out that record. Would you say ten years ago? Yeah. And you at did least, a tour about least. ten years yeah. ago. Yeah. So what's the plan now for the band? So. We recently got back together on a festival yeah. um, in the same location where we actually cut our first demo, and now we're talking 10 years later. Oh, we were invited to, Exactly. And we were pretty nostalgic about it. So uh, the festival's connected with, it's in Cadiz, Ohio, mm -hmm. Treasure, and then we, we decided, well, it's been over a decade. Why don't we cut a new record? <laughs> <laughs> now, we've been touring at Southern Hospitality uh, still throughout the years. Uh, yeah. Uh, of course, J.P. Soares has his own band. Damon has his own band. I have my own band. So we don't get together that often. But when we do, it's always a, a really great time and a yeah. special experience. Yeah. So we got up there and recorded a new record. The name of the record is going to be Yard Sale. It's coming out in October, actually. And uh, actually, I would like to play that song for you right now. Would that be okay? Take Yard it away. Sale? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So all of us have one thing in common, and that's that our families, and, and for me in particular, it was my dad, and we'd go out yard sailing. And that means going, you know, waking up really early, oh trying yeah. to get there before anybody else, and trying to find the deals. And I do remember one particular time, I came across a really cool vintage piano, and I, I opened up the front of it to check the strings, and inside of the piano were like six fishing rods. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And I said, this is mm-hmm. for me. That's Can awesome. I buy the piano and get the fishing rods? <laughs> so anyway, this song is, is a lot of fun, and uh, it picks up on the spirit of that. And I hope the blues community, we love them so much, I'm sure they're going to like this little Cajun beat. Uh, it goes something like this. I 
Mexico we are Oh my God I'm going fishing for more at the yard sale. At the yard sale. When I come to raise your stash, I got a pocket full of cash down at the yard sale. Hey, I'm gonna sing it. Music showcase. We're live in studio with Southern Hospitality, the yard sale. Uh, what's the craziest thing you ever found? You ever bought? You ever found at a yard sale, whether you bought it or not? Every, and that's an open question for the whole room. The craziest thing you ever found at a yard sale? Craziest thing I ever found at a yard mm-hmm. sale, besides a piano filled with fish and. Pole? I mean, that's wild, yeah. <laughs> but I'm curious to see if we can get more wild than that. Go ahead, fellas. What have y'all found? I haven't really gotten any wild stuff. I got a really cool harmony acoustic guitar for ten bucks. Ooh, at a yard sale across that's the street fine. from my grandma's house. It was really Ooh, good. That's satisfying. That's my favorite yard sale moment. That's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Anybody else, or are we all uh, not early risers enough to hit the yard sale? <laughs> pretty much, pretty much all of our band uni- uh, band instruments in the um, junior high school. Yeah, school. yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Yard sale. PA that's gear. that's <laughs> a great tip out there for any fledgling bands out there who are like, I can't afford the equipment. You better get up early and hit that yard sale circuit, especially down here in Florida, because there are plenty of people that like to buy music equipment. And let it collect dust in the corner for about a year or two. And they go, hmm, hmm. I guess I better let that go. <laughs> and they sell it for way cheaper than they bought it. So hit those yard sales, tell you what. I got a cool three, uh, three-wheel three bicycle, like a trike, one of those uh, three-wheel bicycle things. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we found it before a gig, so we, we were actually playing over here on the West Coast. Yeah. We were, we were, we were playing over here on the West Coast, and... Um, <coughs> We put the thing on the roof of the van and drove it all the way back across Florida, across the state, with the bicycle <laughs> on the roof. <laughs> if there's a photo of that somewhere, I want to see there that There is photo. a photo. Yeah, oh, man. I, do, I have to dig it up. Send that to me if you get yeah, the time. Nice. I would love that. All right, real quick, uh, before we dive into some more music, we're at the halfway point of the show. That means that we are at the Ask Musicians Anything segment of the show. It's your chance as a listener, as a viewer, to call into the station, 813-269-9663. Uh, 239-9663 and uh, any questions or comments that you have for the band, for the show, for WMNF, the weirder the better. We like them weird on this show. <laughs> Call in right now, 813-239-9663. Our board op, Charlie, will take your calls and your questions. He'll send them over to me and at the end of the show, we'll share them with the band. Or you can send us an email, dj at wmnf.org. Or if you're watching the live stream right right now, which uh, a healthy number of people are currently watching, leave a comment with your with whatever question or comment you might have. By all means, we got a bunch of them already. So much talent here. Nice, good stuff. Uh, bicep emoji. You know, strong, right. real strong, <laughs> real good. Er, yeah. Uh, all right. So I want to give a little attention real quick uh, to JP. JP Soars, not Sears, like I said earlier, because I'm an idiot. Uh, JP, uh, you're doing some cool stuff this year too. You released an album earlier this year, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, somewhere around June 30th. And I mean, on your, I pulled this from your website, so, you know, I'm not uh, making this up as we go along here, but, uh, website says, uh, let's see in 2009, JP won the blues foundations, international blues challenge, as well as the prestigious Albert King guitar award. I mean, that's no, that that's nothing to shake a stick at. I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, so, I mean, tell me a little bit about that. What what was that experience like for you? Uh, it was uh, it was it was awesome. It was over a little bit overwhelming actually. We totally weren't expecting you know yeah. to, to to win. We just kind of it was the third time we'd went up there for that um, for that event, and um, we had 
no expectations of winning or anything. We just said, let's go up there and meet people. It's a great networking tool. And um, when they announced our name as the winners, we were, we were quite overwhelmed and surprised. And it, it helped us out a lot. We were just playing around Florida at the time. Yeah. And um, it helped us get outside of Florida and get on some festivals and um, break into the international you know, market. So it was great. That's something I've noticed about <coughs> the blues genre and the blues genre industry. It seems like, maybe I'm wrong, tell me if I'm wrong, this is from an outsider's perspective, but it seems like the people that win those awards actually genuinely do get real opportunities uh, from winning those awards, whereas there, there are other you know genres where they, they just kind of hand out awards like candy, yeah. and it's nice to win, but it doesn't actually lead to a lot of opportunity. Would you say that's accurate? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not so familiar with winning awards. That's, a, you know, I haven't, that's the only one we really ever, Yeah. you know, but it was... Yeah. Uh, it definitely helped us out. Helped us out, and everyone was so nice. You know, everyone that we met in festivals and and you know people in the industry were just really kind to us, and you know helped us out a lot. That's sure. fantastic. Yeah, uh, you love to hear that. I mean, the I mean the stigma uh, from the outside again with uh, the music industry in general is that it's full of sharks and it's it's full of terrible people and uh, they'll they'll bleed you dry with a smile on their face, and I think that's probably true in some circles, but. Uh, we can oh, all, I see some reactions yeah. here just well, to that. We, we can all okay. name one or two, but we're not going <laughs> to. Yeah. But I would say that 98% of the people that we work with or have crossed paths with, especially in the blues industry, yeah. um, which we mostly reside, mm -hmm. have been incredible, incredibly supportive. Um, and uh, I hope to continue working with all of them, um, more or less, besides one or two. But we're just not going to mention them. 98% is <laughs> 98% though, it really is. Well, I'll put it this way. I'll ask it this way. If you were if you were giving advice to you know, a fledgling musician out there, maybe a fledgling blues player out there who's got some chops and is trying to make some moves, what do you think you would tell them to avoid if they were I would you know, some of the best advice ever given to me was to avoid trying to pick the best. And what that means is it's way better to find people that you get along with, like friends and try to make music with your friends it it ends up being better music because your friendship and the relationship that you have comes across in the music that you make so a lot of young fledgling players maybe sp someone's 14 years old is getting into the blues they'll hire a 40 year old bass player and some other person because they heard they're the best and they heard they're the best it's actually my advice get with your friends start listening to records go to the go to a yard sale and pick up some vinyls yeah. Some BB King, some Otis Rush, some whatever you are into, but but listen to it together, then play together, see if you can figure it out and grow together. Because the people that you grow up with and that you grow with in this industry, they'll stick by your side forever. Um, I've got guys in my band that have been with me for over ten years, and we're extremely they're my best friends, and it shows on stage. I truly believe that, uh, and the joy that you share on stage comes across to your listening audience and to the au your live audience. They can pick up on it and feel it. And the music, you can hear misery on a record real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my that's favorite, true. that's one of my favorite sound bites ever from this show. That's <laughs> great. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, and, and it's, a, it's a genre that as a, as a guitarist, as a musician, it needs to be genuine. Like you can't really you can't really fake it and expect to be successful because it's an audience that, that really looks for authenticity. Um, yeah. I mean, they look for the chops, they look for the 12 bar, they look for the stride, but they, they want to see that. They want to see you having a good yeah. time. With Roots music in particular, it's not the notes that you play, it's really the intent behind the notes. And if you're approaching it with joy and we're communicating musically while we're up there and, and because we're so close, that all comes together to make the music what it's supposed to be in my opinion which is a joyous celebration of something and and all we're doing is invoking emotion with the audience that's in front of us or the audience that's listening to our record and whatever emotion that we have we're portraying it to them they pick it up and they give it back to us so it's totally cyclical and it's important that is what roots music is is love actually that. the emotion i love that that's so great so do you feel uh you victor uh that you 
make that like a priority at every show is that kind of oh, absolutely like the, that's kind of like the foundation yeah. yeah we can hit bad notes all night long laugh at each other put my arm around terry every time he does it go to the bar have a beer talk to our fans meet and greet and you know people pick up on that stuff man you can't turn around and give a bad look and it doesn't matter to me like I said, it's the intent behind the notes that you're playing. If you're playing it with passion and feeling, then it comes across as really good. I love that. Always. I love that. If you're just joining us, this is Live Music Showcase. We're live in studio with Southern Hospitality, Victor Wainwright, Damon Fowler, J.P. Soares, uh, live in studio. They're playing a show tonight mm-hmm. at the Palladium. You can still get tickets for that show at mypalladium.org. Uh, you can head over there for more information about the show and, and uh, everything going on with the Palladium as well. They're good friends. We love those people over there. Paul Wilborn, great guy. Yeah, uh, awesome. Great, great yeah. people that do good work over there. They've been super supportive of us for over a decade yeah. between and our individual bands. Mm-hmm. And also just a big shout out to Terrence Sweet T Grayson and Chris Pete on the drums, Terry's playing bass. They're they've got a lot of fans out there too. So some of the people in your live chat, I'm sure are already talking to them too. I have no doubt. And I mean <laughs> it, you know, we had um do you guys know Kid Royal? He's a local yeah, guy. Sure. Yeah, great guy, really nice guy. And uh he had uh third, Richardson, uh playing drums for him uh the day that he had him in here. And people don't really, I think realize how important the rhythm section is in a blues ensemble because you think oh it's just 12 bar blues like no it needs to groove it needs to to have that energy otherwise it's just kind of like robotic and it doesn't have that that and we're i'd consider us super blessed with these guys yeah they sound phenomenal couldn't ask for a better rhythm section no way yeah i mean thank you guys for being here just to be very clear yeah they're they're nodding right now for the radio audience. <laughs> in case you're curious, yeah. Uh, all right, so uh, let's dive into some more music. What do you say? Sure. Let's do yeah. It. What we got, fellas? I'm gonna do this one. Do uh, pretty one. We recorded it on the new record. It's called uh, "What I Feel in My Heart." <laughs> people say I'm gonna love you anyway and I know what I feel in my heart sometimes you're sweet sometimes you're tough sometimes you just Tell me apart, I know what I feel in my heart. And when I look into your eyes, I find myself, darling, I need your help to pull me out. Oh, this misery, oh babe, I'm down on my knees, I'm gonna love you till my dying days, you give me sweet love in every way I know, what I feel in my heart.
I'm gonna love you till my dying day. You give me sweet love in every way I know. What I feel in my heart. Yes, I know. What I feel in my heart. Yes, I know. What I feel in my heart. <laughs> no cussing now. That's yeah, not a curse. No That's a place in Jamaica. <laughs> I got a t-shirt to prove it. Welcome to Live Music Show. Casey, if you're just joining us, we're live in studio here with Southern Hospitality. Mr. Victor Wainwright, Mr. Damon Fowler, Mr. J.P. Soares here. Uh, oh, man, uh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna make the show about me. It's been a heck of a week. I'll just tell you this. I needed this episode, so thank you guys. Really. Yeah, man. Thank you, really thank really you for inviting us. Yeah, any incredible. It's always great to be here, Debbie yeah. and M&F. I mean, the the thing about Debbie and M&F and the thing that I love about um, the community that's centered around the you know the people that are that are listening right now, the people that support the station during the pledge drives, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, just so you know. Um, it, it's autonomous. It, it's one of the only stations in in the market. Maybe maybe though. No, it's not. But one of the only stations in the market that still has full autonomy. We still have. I, I, as a, a show host and producer, still have full say in like who comes on the show and who doesn't, and we get to give lots of opportunities to like the local bands who aren't as well known. Uh, you guys are not in that category, uh, not anymore. Especially uh, seeing your name plastered all over Americana Fest last year, Victor. Um, <laughs> I was up there, and I'm like, I'm rolling around town because if you don't know, uh, to the listeners here in America, Americana Fest in Nashville is is kind of like uh it's kind of like south by southwest in the sense that it's like spread across the entire city it's uh, they they had something like i might be completely off base here i, I believe it was like 60 to 80 like venues mm -hmm. all over the city yeah. uh hundreds of performers doing hundreds of performances it's a week-long thing and i mean if you're if you're in nashville for americana fest you're going all over nashville bring a car rent a car because the scooter's not going to do it uh, I'll just say that <laughs> I tried didn't work um, anyway my my question is uh, what well, how was your experience with that how did you enjoy that how did you find it I found it incredible because I don't normally get to do that kind of thing uh, I'd say that right now with with my band personally we play mostly festivals mm -hmm. and they're mostly blues festivals uh, maybe 80 percent the other 20 percent are these what you could call an Americana festival or a jam festival, mm -hmm. um, like Black Blair or the one in Nashville. We're doing a few more this year, but it's it's incredible because it's something new. And what what the most fun I have is going to listen to the other bands. One of the best parts about playing blues festivals is that instead, uh, unlike when you're you're touring and you're playing in a club, we don't really get to see our friends outside of our own immediate bands. When you're playing a blues festival, you get to see your friends. Almost always, there's someone on the lineup that you can hook up with give a big hug and say, man, that's so great. And now I get to listen to you. Maybe we can jam together. That happens a lot in blues fests. Um, there's jamming. In the Americana world and jam world, I don't know as many people. I didn't grow up in that world. So it's, it's a great opportunity to meet new friends and to hear new styles of music that I'm not as familiar with. And I find it a learning experience, an exciting experience, some place I can go and, and see something brand new and pick up from. And my music will always come with the roots and the blues. I, that's just the way I play and the way I was taught from my grandpa on piano. But hearing that style of music, it, it does influence you, and, and it's real exciting to meet those musicians. Uh, give me a little touch of inside baseball. Uh, when you say you like picked up a few things, you learned a thing or two. Like, give me mm -hmm. give me an example of something you learned. At well, American it's not Fest. so much regarding the music; it's actually yeah. regarding the stagecraft. Oh, okay. So, and and yeah, and those Love type, that. it's it's different. They're a lot of the guys are performing in a slightly different way than you see a lot of bands performing on stages with Blues World. And it's, um, I perform with a, a whole lot of energy. 
you know, I can't stand to sit no. still and you? I'm jumping, yeah, I'm <laughs> jumping around, but, uh, just picking up a few things from some of those guys, uh, whether they're extremely laid back and they're playing like grateful dead type stuff or whether they're jumping all over the stage, there's always something to learn. Mm -hmm. And if you just open your eyes and your heart, you could pick up a lot from just listening to uh, f fellow musicians, people that are on the same track you are. I love they're it. trying to entertain a crowd. So how are they doing that? How are they entertaining this crowd? How have they captivated them so well? And, and a lot of times those, those crowds can be huge, huge, huge. There's a big listening base for Americana and jam music. Totally. And so when you go to some of those festivals, it's a humongous crowd. Now, how do you influence such a large crowd? It, it, it might be a little bit different than what you're used to if you're only playing a certain style of music. So I like to go on there and, and, and pick up things and, and watch other bands and how they do that. That's a great point. Um, when, you, when you reach a level of success, sometimes the assumption is that it, people will stop learning but I think it's the opposite I think most of the time the more successful you are if you have a good head on your shoulders the more you want to learn I, I think so I think um, it can become quite boring standing still and I think we all want to keep growing and keep creating as part of being a musician you have a, a will and an, an urge inside of you that wants to create something and share something um, and when you have that inside you, you have to move forward and you have to learn because otherwise we're just redoing what we've already done over and over again. Yeah. So in 10 years, you'll be a progressive jazz player. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> it's never, it's never ending. Acid jazz by Victor Wainwright. No. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we have just a little bit more time left. Uh, I think that we can probably squeeze in one more song if you guys want to, you, you can even stretch it out if you want to. Um, before you do that, uh, just so we're coming up to the end of the show, but we're not done yet, so don't go anywhere. I see you over there watching the live stream. Don't go anywhere just yet. Uh, before we get into this next song, we'll do the credits for the show real quick. Credit where credit is due. This show takes an entire team of dedicated volunteers who are working behind the scenes to make it look as good and sound as good as it does. Sound mixer, Mark Perfetti, audio assistant, Pam Robinson. Our video director today is Charles Holsoppel. Our camera operators today are Marcy Connors and Lisa Reuter. Our board op is Charlie Cushing, and I am your host, Ken Apperson. We are Live Music Showcase every Friday at 2 p.m. Make sure you stick around after the show. Reverend Billy and the Rhythm Revival come on uh, right after our show, uh, right after the news headlines, so don't go anywhere. It's, uh, it's a whole afternoon here on WMNF of great entertainment uh so and real quick too i'll i'll share a couple I, we got a couple of new ones here a couple of comments i haven't seen any questions just yet uh but a lot of comments let's see here uh, always a pleasure to hear damon fowler from d rice uh let's see love that guitar solo uh loving it i listen almost every week and this is the best band so far i wish i could see them tonight but i'm out here in pa uh, so there you go. We got listeners out there in Pennsylvania listening. And then I noticed one in the comments on the live stream too. Uh, Klaus says, hi guys. Nice to see and hear you live following you from Norway. So that's All cool. All right. All right. Cool. We are officially international. It's been a while since we've been to Norway. We might have to make our way back soon. Europe loves blues, right? Oh, yeah. Am I crazy? Yeah. Seems like they love blues over there. Oh, and we love them. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, so uh, what's this last song going to be called? So I'll play the last song. It's, it's, it's called Boogie with Jesus. It's just enough time to fit in. I love it. And before <laughs> you do, just one more reminder. This band, Southern Hospitality, these guys are playing at the Palladium tonight. You might already be sold out by now. Who knows? But if, you're, if they're not, mypalladium.org, you can head over there and find out about ticket sales, how much they cost, where to buy them, all that stuff. Uh, mypalladium.org for tickets to tonight's show at the Palladium featuring Southern Hospitality with Victor Wainwright, Damon Fowler, J.P. Soares. Uh, take it away, you guys. Thanks so much for being here. All right. Thank you. All right. Jesus, 
Yeah, uh, gospel, a little yeah, gospel man. Just a little bit. Took us to church a little, a little gospel bit. gospel via Jerry Lee Lewis, you know? Oh, Something yeah. that we wrote, but greatly influenced by my grandfather who taught me how to play piano. And he was a huge Jerry Lee Lewis boogie-woogie, honky-tonk blues piano player out of Savannah, Georgia. He taught me everything I know. So I wrote that song for him and my family. And it's on our next record coming out in October. And here's another interesting fact. None of these songs have been played but one time before live. Ooh this is the second time we've ever gotten together and played these songs before uh, since we recorded it, which yeah. has been about a year ago. Yeah, so I think the guys really sounded great, man. And I'm, I'm happy to be here on WMNF sharing this brand new music with you all. The, the album will be out in October. The title is Yard Sale. If I had known... Uh, any better i would have thought you guys have been playing that song for years no <laughs> crushing it and and on to you know to your comment uh, before about uh, you know playing with your friends and everything it shows it shows it shows you guys get along at least it seems like it and uh thank you so much for being here on the show thank you so much for making the time making the trip over the over the bridge and coming over here before your show tonight at the palladium thank you southern hospitality here on live music showcase don't forget if you're just joining us guess what the end of the show you missed it but you can listen uh, in podcast form just go to spotify or apple music and search live music showcase this is Live Music Showcase on WMNF Tampa. We're out, man. We're rocking. All right. Yeah. We're out.